Bet on Bears fans, another edition of the Chicago Bears podcast coming your way. Pat the designer, Shay Norling back in here on a Monday. If you are a running back fan, log out now because it is going to get ugly with how this run game performed versus the Indianapolis Colts. The Chicago Bears taking another L. One that, Shay, I have watched this game twice now. I have started to dig into the All-22, and I honestly still don't know how the Bears found a way to lose this game. Well, it's pretty simple. You can't run the ball against a horrible rush defense. Uh, you turn the ball over in the low red zone with a strip sack fumble. Can't happen. And look, Caleb, I thought, played pretty well in the game. Should have only been picked once. The second pick was on Rome. Tip drill, yeah. kind of wild play. I thought he played well, but the strip sack can't happen. I, I honestly, that's probably more on the left tackle. You get rushed from your blind side. Oh, and Cole you're Komet. Football. <laughs> yeah. Cole, Cole Komet once left, again blocking. Left tackle Cole Komet. <laughs> hey, how about left tackle DeAndre Carter on third and goal? I'll tell you how they lost this game because they're stupid. Yeah. And another thing, they're arrogant. I dare anybody, anybody who gave me a hard time about me saying, Punter, running back, not great. Open free agency. Let's blow our load on a running back out of the gate. Not a good one either. A running back Philly was happy to let walk out the door, who his previous team, Detroit, was happy to let walk out the door. Why? Because he's hurt and he can't run through contact. Doesn't break tackles. Doesn't create any space. Doesn't have a vision at all. Now you're going to bring him here, put him behind an awful offensive line, what do we got so far, Pat? What do we got for DeAndre Swift? Your big, out-of-the-gate free agent signing. Two for two on those sucking, by the way. Nate Davis blows. Should have been an active. Got forced into duty because of an injury. DeAndre Swift, your second out-of-the-gate big money signing. Sucks. 37 carries on the season. How many yards? How many yards, Pat? Less than 100 still. Less than still, 70. Still less than 100. 68 <laughs> yards on 37 carries over three weeks. Do the math. What's that per carry? 1.8. Yep. $8 million a year for 1.8 yards per carry. Honestly, I, I'll do the Bears a favor. Get me in a room with this cat. I'm going to, like, while he's asleep, <laughs> give, give him an Ambien and knock him out. <laughs> And get me in a room, and I will weekend at Bernie's his retirement papers filings. I'm livid about this. Then you got the punter, who also stunk yesterday. He's like at best average. You draft a punter in the fourth round, you better hit the grass as the best punter in the NFL. Nope. I, I am... You want to know how they lost? Because they're arrogant. They're doing things they can't afford to do. You don't have a guard, a center, or a guard. You don't have a left tackle who I had high hopes for Braxton Jones. Throw that out. Yeah. You don't have a left tackle who's good enough, period. You went running back, punter, traded for a wide receiver who's dead three weeks in. Yeah. Why'd you lose? Oh, I don't because you can't build a team right. It's all so silly. It just, it pisses me off. And then I'm sitting there, I'm trying to enjoy the afternoon games. And I'm sitting in front of my computer. I'm watching Red Zone. I got the Baltimore-Dallas uh, game up. And I'm just sitting there angry. Just stewing. You got a moron OC calling speed option like he's at Liberty on fourth and one. <laughs> exactly like he is. Hey, no, no. We cannot disrespect Liberty like that. Liberty would not call that on the goal line. <laughs> They're a triple option school. <laughs> 52 dropbacks, 57, whatever it was, 52 pass attempts for your rookie quarterback. How'd you lose? You're stupid. I, I can't even disagree, which is the tough part. And, and here's here's the thing that it comes down to to me. Um, and we were on opposite ends of the Justin Fields debate. But the point that we could meet on was protect the quarterback. The point that we both believed you had to do going into this draft was protect the quarterback. And not only have you not protected the quarterback, you didn't even try. Ryan Poles, for everything that he's done, and I think there's a lot of good that he's brought to this team. I think there's a lot of good pieces here. I think you got to figure out how to use them. Good job. You failed Caleb Williams. Just like Ryan Pace failed Mitch Trubisky and Justin Fields. 
you have failed Caleb Williams. And I can say that confidently three weeks in. And I understand that we had Ryan Poles on with Jeff Joniak yesterday, and he said that it is not a talent issue that is wrong with this offensive line. It is a execution issue. I've watched the All-22. I have watched the game multiple times. I have watched every single game the Bears have played this season probably four times minimum, including the All-22. Coleman Shelton knows where he's supposed to be. Coleman Shelton is not stupid. He knows that's my guy to block. I need to get in good position. I need to block him. Coleman Shelton is not talented enough to do that. That's a failure on Ryan Poles for Caleb Williams. You watched Justin Fields have to be Javi Baez for two seasons because you didn't have a center that could do at a basic minimum thing, Shay. Snap the football, block. Simplifying it as low as we can go. Can he snap and block? Coleman Shelton's got the snap part down, but he's not good enough to block versus a defensive line that didn't have DeForest Buckner rushing yesterday. You bring up Braxton Jones. I thought you were supposed to wear cleats on the field. Braxton Jones is out there in Nike flip-flops. Yep. Because literally, go back and watch the tape. He is engaging his man while sliding backwards. He is trying his best. So when Ryan Poles comes out and tells me it is not a talent issue that the Chicago Bears are dealing with on the offensive line, I'm wondering what kind of talent are you trying to evaluate? Because it looks like you have inept talent for your brand new quarterback who is dropping back 52 times in that game. He's dropped back over 100 times this season. He's been pressured on more than 50% of his dropbacks. This is we want to blame everybody in the world. We're going to blame the OC again. We're going to blame the 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 uh, uh, players in front of Caleb. We're not going to blame Caleb yet because this is rookie year, right? Everybody, this is his rookie year. You can't no, blame I, Caleb Williams. Honestly, look, I get if people want to blame Caleb, and I get if people are watching Justin in, in Pittsburgh and they're going, "We should have kept him." I get it. I'm not blaming Caleb because I already told you I didn't think he played bad yesterday. I I, I agree. With I that. think we saw some of the growth, and we will. And I yeah. think he will. I still believe 100 percent in my core that he's going to be an elite player yeah but your point is dead on and the person who i blame the most and everybody's got look shane waldron why what are you doing blocking with deandre carter <laughs> on the left side of the line on third and goal i don't know you want to blame matt eberflus fine he hired shane waldron and frankly i believe everything on that headset goes through matt eberflus headset you hear something nutty like speed option on yeah. fourth and goal Time out. No, Shane, let's check this out. We got to make sure we're doing this right. Yeah, You're late out of the huddle. Caleb can't make an adjustment. Time out. Is Caleb allowed to call a timeout? I don't know. All I hear about is execution. You want to blame Matt Eberflus? Fine, more than deserving. Who I blame the most is your general manager, Ryan Poles. Yeah. Because what did I tell you? and I talked, and I told you, I, I see what he's doing. This is the Joe Burrow Bengals. You are banking on playmakers and an ability from a quarterback to get the ball out quickly, accurately, get the ball to guys in space to make plays. And we know we're going to have protection problems, but we'll work through it. And I said, the one thing holding me back from going, this team can win this division and be a Super Bowl team. I still think there's a world they can get this right, win nine, 10 games, make the playoffs. I was never on board with the Nick Wright Super Bowl stuff because I told you the trenches, both sides of the ball, not good enough. Yeah. The offensive line is morbid. And on the defensive side, I'm sorry, man. Montez Sweat's great. But I got to watch Demarcus Walker get moved around on run plays. Jonathan Taylor blowing by you. You're not even trying to get off a block. Uh, but I see, I can't even. And this is why I, I go back to my Ryan Poles point. The defense is fine to me. Demarcus Walker is fine to me. I understand what you're saying. But at a certain point. You're going to get tired if you keep being out there. We've watched this Fair. in Chicago, in history. That DeMarcus Walker didn't have a problem stopping Jonathan Taylor the first time down. They had a problem stopping him after you make a mistake on special teams, and now you got to go right back out there and figure it out because 
your discipline, your execution in that moment was poor. My biggest problem right now, and even with Shane Waldron, right, with the play caller, with the people that you've put in place around Caleb Williams, with keeping Matt Eberflus, whatever that is, is no matter what you say, you have to look up. Ryan Poles, I, I have commended him. It has been in polls we trust. But the thing that we were trusting was what he said, what everybody in Chicago said. This offensive line, Shay, you said this. This offensive line ain't that bad. Justin holds the football too long. Caleb Williams don't hold the football. That football comes out. 2.5 seconds. He is meeting the Tom Brady marker. And it means absolutely nothing when you're talking about pressure in his face. It means absolutely nothing when you're talking about the blocking scheme in front of him. He's getting pressure just as much as Justin Fields. It, maybe more so in some situations. He's been sacked 13 times in three games. Seven in one of them. Yep. And you know what's what's wild? And I'll own it. Like I said, I didn't think the offensive line last year was as bad as people made it out to be. Justin did hold the ball too He long. did, 100%. Justin created a lot of his sacks. I don't think Caleb has yet, which is why, again, I'm still high on yeah. Caleb. If Caleb were just holding the ball and making these sacks happen, I'd have issues. That's not happening. He's got no chance. Yeah. How has this offensive line regressed this much? You went out and addressed center, like, and you didn't do enough. Coleman Shelton was never enough. He can't be this bad. How has Braxton Jones looked worse? How does Nate Davis look worse to the point that he's really unplayable? How is Matt Pryor your best option? We better hope Ryan Bates is Quentin Nelson and waiting. <laughs> because honestly, like how has it gotten so much worse? What is happening in the coaching staff at Hallis Hall that this O-line went from middle of the pack not good enough to be a Super Bowl team, but good enough you can protect the QB, to absolutely horrible, to cannot even run the football, can't even pretend to, to run the football. I, I, I don't think that it, I don't think anything's changed. And here's my thing. I do agree with you. I believe that Justin Fields ran himself into a lot of sacks because he vacated the pocket way too quickly. But I think that that also gave a scapegoat to an offensive line of, well, Darnell Wright's doing his job here. Justin Fields just runs that way and runs into a sack. Yeah. Braxton Jones doing his job over here. Justin Fields just runs out of there and, and runs himself into a sack. But what we never acknowledged was, hey, well, why is Justin Fields running? Well, the middle of that line just got knocked over, basically. And maybe and now Caleb it. Williams is dealing with the same things we saw last season. And this is not – I don't want this to come off as the Pat wants Justin Fields, but I'm good with Caleb. We're three weeks in. He's thrown 363 yards. I, I don't know if Justin threw 363 yards in his time here as a Bear. I haven't double-checked the numbers. I'm good with him. I think he goes through progressions better. He does look like a quarterback. What I'm not good with is you putting him in the exact same situation that Justin Fields is it was in and going, well, Justin was so much of the problem that this offensive line is not something we need to worry about. We can band-aid it. We can piecemeal it. And I was willing to fall. Okay, Ryan Poles making some great moves. And Poles we trust. Let's go. We're three weeks in. Caleb Williams has been failed all the way around. And we talk about the offensive play caller, the idiotic calls. What do you do for a rookie quarterback? You sit there and go, he's going to make rookie mistakes. I got to call plays that accentuate the moment for him. If he does make a rookie mistake, he's got this little bit of cushion. Shane Waldron on three plays in a row in the goal, in the red zone. I'll give you, I'll, I'll give you a, 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 a grace on the Wildcat play because it got you three yards, gets you the third one. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of Wildcat. But it got you three yards. You couldn't run the ball. I'll take it. You then go to a play where DeAndre Carter is blocking. Who's who's 94? I don't, I don't even know who 94 is. Is that Latu No, but his uh, name escapes me. Uh, somebody way too big for DeAndre yeah. Carter to be blocking. Outweighed by about 100 pounds. Yeah. Uh, by the way, you, you still got Roshan Johnson over on the other side of the field, uh, or not even on the field on that play, uh, who's a much better blocker than either DeAndre Carter or uh, uh, DeAndre Swift in that situation. Forget Anybody you could have put out Forget there. blocking. He's a better power runner than Khalil <laughs> Herbert. 100%. He was the best rusher on the field all day for the Bears, and they go away from him on first and second down. And I'm not giving grace on Wildcat. 
You believe in Caleb Williams. We believe in Caleb Williams. Yeah. America believes in Caleb Williams. Put him on the field. Yeah. It's critical territory. He was out there. He was at wide out. <laughs> you get my point. I get you. You're I taking you. the ball away you. from your quarterback yes. on first and goal. He got you down here. Yeah. Put him on the field. I get he made a bad decision on an interception earlier. Put him on the field. He's going to make bad decisions. Yeah. He also threw a touchdown to Rome. He threw a touchdown to Komet. He could have thrown a touchdown. You can't run the ball. And, and DeAndre Swift sucks enough. He's horrible. Yeah. Stop. And this week is going to tell me a lot. I said this on the morning breeze this morning. This week is going to tell me so much because we were three years into Nate Davis before he was so bad the politics didn't matter. Because we know how football goes. You're If you're paid, you're out there. If I'm paying you, you're going to play. How much does winning matter? Because you saw something. I'll, I'll say this. As bad as that game was, run game was that night, you saw something that worked to the point that you could actually run play action and you could run some, some uh, option plays on that final drive that you get a touchdown on to Cole Komet because all of a sudden Roshan Johnson's able to move the ball up the field. And I'll tell you this, you had a player like Roshan here, and what was he able to do for you in David Montgomery? And what I mean by that is it didn't matter that the offensive line sucked. What mattered was if he got hit in the backfield, he could still get you three yards. Roshan Johnson yesterday on eight carries, only 30 yards out of all of it, but 3.8 yards per carry. With this offensive line, that's elite. You're nearly getting four yards a pop. That's the guy. He's he should. And look, I was somebody who thought Khalil Herbert, even with DeAndre Swift, I thought DeAndre Swift was a downgrade. And if you look at all the stuff he did in Philly last year, great, a thousand yards. Thirty percent of that ground production came in two games, week two and week three. He never hit a hundred yards rushing again in a game. He ran negative rush yards over expected behind an elite offensive line in yeah. Philadelphia. He cannot get through contact. He has horrible vision. It feels like every time he gets the ball, he's running himself into a tackler. Roshan at least could get through the line of scrimmage. Yes. And the, the, the Swift thing, it probably shouldn't make me this angry, but I hated it when they did it. I never thought that it made sense. I mean, the moment I, it, he got signed, free agency opens, and it was like before my ass hit the couch, I get the notification from <laughs> Pelissero or whoever. DeAndre Swift signs $24 million deal with the Bears. And I go, what? Of all the things, yeah. you need center, you need another defensive end, you need a guard, you needed a wide receiver. And you went with running back? You're telling me that $8 million a year couldn't have been spent anywhere else on this team. And then you go, trade for Keenan Allen. Great, I was happy with it. But I also said when you did that, now you should use the ninth pick and either trade out, get an O-lineman, trade out, get a defensive lineman, or, hey, both. Yeah. No, we'll double down at wide receiver. Okay, another luxury. And I don't dislike Roma Dunze. I'm just making the point. I think yesterday's a start of yeah. what we may see in the future. 112 yards, touchdown. You got to catch the one that hits you dead in the face. But, Absolutely. yeah, I mean. <laughs> but I'm, and it's not an anti-Rome take. It's yeah. just you addressed it with Keenan Allen. Now you're doubling down on it with Rome, and you still have an empty interior of your offensive line and a vacancy on the opposite edge of Montez Sweat. Those two things always bothered me, and I think they both are showing themselves. The defense against the run yesterday, not nearly as good as it should have been. And I get it's Jonathan Taylor. I get it's Anthony Richardson. I get it's the Colts offensive line. I cannot look at the Marcus Walker getting blocked 15 yards down the field as Jonathan Taylor runs in a freebie. Can't happen. But how, but do you feel like – see, here's my thing when I come away from that game. I didn't feel like Jonathan Taylor controlled the game. I didn't I felt, feel like the Colts controlled the I, game. Exactly. I, I felt like Jonathan Taylor had moments that were usually when the Bears defense had to go right back out there and were battered and beaten, and then he was able to break something. I didn't feel like he was just dominating the Bears all day. Anthony Richardson was not. Out, I Don't let that highlight of him running over no. that Jalen Johnson no, and you, uh, fool you. You know what? You got through. I, honestly, the defense survived for the most part. A couple explosive plays. Yeah. The, the Jonathan Taylor run, which did bother me. And Jalen Johnson getting cooked. He got run over. Oh, by that, Alec oh Pierce. yeah, that was crazy. Getting cooked that was crazy. by Alec Pierce. Yeah, that, yeah. Listen, things happen. For the most part, 
the defense did their job. Yes. And the sudden change deal, the strip sack fumble that leads to a touchdown, that sucks. It puts you in a hole. I, I They just did not do enough to address the things they needed to address. Yeah. And then for their mentality and everything that they tell us, we have to execute in the run game. You got to run the football. We got to be able to establish it, control the tempo of the game. Great. You can't. You can't. Your interior is horrible, and you signed a running back you should have been 50 feet away from throughout the entirety of free agency. He never should have been allowed in the building. He's awful. Yeah. I mean, a total mistake. Through through three games, I mean, you you're you you can't even say any defense of it. Like, it, and here's here's my biggest issue with it. One, you spend the eight million dollars on it. You should never be spending money on running backs. I laughed the entire time we saw Roshan Johnson dominating on that second to last drive where the Bears go down and score a touchdown. No, last drive when they go down and score a touchdown. I, I sat there and laughed because I just I looked at uh, uh, my producer from the Breeze. I was just like, how much does he make? How much does he make? He makes $900,000. He's the best running back on your team. Yep. But I think here's my biggest issue now. Not only the fact that you basically just didn't even try to address it, but the fact that you were arrogant about it and you went out and added other pieces that aren't making an impact on the team. Right. Keenan Allen right now is sitting down. I mean, like, I, I think that Keenan, listen, if you're going to deal with injury, deal with it now. But plantar fasciitis, I as a, him all year. as a Bulls fan, he's probably on now the downward slope of his career. But what I'll say is this. You do get the compensatory pick. Um, that is the best case scenario out of this. Basically, you hope that he gets on the field, shows you something, because I think the worst that it can be because of his deal and all that is a fourth. So you basically get your pick back uh, if you let him walk at the end of the year. But on top of that, you, you got no Keenan Allen. You got nothing from any of your offensive line signings. I mean, Matt Pryor yesterday, were we enamored with him? I, I didn't feel great about it. Coleman Shelton, I've, I've been feeling terrible about since you brought him in. And the best move that you thought you were going to make to be, to be your starting center was Ryan Bates. I don't know if anybody's seen Ryan Bates. I've watched a lot of Ryan Bates. I've seen him almost every day at training camp. Saw him go through a lot of the practices, swap in, swap out. You know what Ryan Bates looks like? He looks like a backup right guard. <laughs> Guess what he was in Buffalo? Yeah, and look. A backup right guard. He's on IR right now. Hopefully we get him back in a couple weeks, and hopefully this offensive line looks a little bit better. be hard to look worse. But uh, the arrogance of it is the thing that bothers me the most because we knew everybody, every idiot, every idiot fan like me, I don't pretend to know more football than Ryan Poles. No. But I, I'm an idiot with a microphone. But I could see center was a dire position of need. You needed a guard. You needed to fix the interior of this line. And I don't know if anybody drafted after him will become a good player, even a serviceable player. But you took a punter in the fourth round. And whatever you want to say about it, well, he's a weapon. He can pin the ball inside the five. Show Danny, me. Because he hasn't yet. Show me. Oh, great. He can boom a 68-yard punt out of the end zone. Well, great. The ball still starts on the 45 if it doesn't get wiped out for a penalty. Good acting job. That actually was a weapon moment. <laughs> that, 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 that was great. I, but you get my point. Yeah, you got to show me. If you can boom it to the 30 from the end zone, wonderful. Is Can your coverage unit get down there quick enough to stop a return? Because that drive still would have started on the 45. Yeah. And for all the talk about pin inside the 10, I'm seeing a lot of drives start on the 17. At least you're getting it inside the 20. But if you're going to be taken in the fourth round of the draft as a punter, you have to be the best punter in the league. Sorry, I don't make the rules. And, and my problem is, especially when I saw the Bears bring – now he can kick it further than uh, – um, what was his name? Waitman, I think it was, the 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 guy we signed off of the street. He can definitely kick it further. He's got the leg for it. He's, he's got the boom. But every punt Tory Taylor pinpointed, I watched the dudes you sign off the street do – I watched, I watched him, that backspin, everybody, oh, the backspin on it, which I haven't seen yet. The backspin on this guy. I watched him do it. So, so I watched you sign a dude off the street who did what you signed the guy in the fourth round to do. The fact people in this town let themselves get a little hot and heavy about a punter. In this town, M Meller. <laughs> Meller was banging the drum. You can't let this guy get past. You know what I would like right now? At least to know that Cedric Van Pran is warming up. Yeah. You know, I'd take the, the Giovanni Manu kid the Lions took. I don't know anything about him. He doesn't have a profile photo. I think he's from, like, 
I don't even know where. I'm not even going to make a guess because I don't want to be insensitive. Yeah. It, it, it just like I'd take anything other than a punter, I think. And seeing the return, if he's been fine. I needed him to be great. Yeah. You take a punter in the fourth round, he's got to be great. And you don't get the grace that the quarterback and the wide receiver. No, get. of course not. You're, you're, you're punting. It's, it's the same punting in the NFL as it is in college. People are running towards you. They're trying to knock you out. They're trying to take your legs out, and you're punting. It all just it all bothers me, man. It all this team, everything they do is silly. It it all just feels like signing a running back, drafting a punter, trading for a receiver, drafting another receiver. You're building the Burrow Bengals. Have you looked at what Joe Burrow's life has been like in the NFL? Yeah. Not yes, good. he went to a Super Bowl, and yes, I'm still hopeful that Caleb Williams and this crew of weapons can make that happen in a couple years. But where they stand right now, I don't see it. Yeah, 100%. Looks like we got uh, Lance Briggs joining yes, in do. on the show. Mr. Briggs, I'm sure that you have heard a good chunk of our ranting here. I did. I have. I have. And, and um, I want to join you in your frustrations. Oh, thank you, Lance. I thought we were going to get the, the – it's not as bad as we all think it is, uh, Lance, today. <laughs> Well, there's a, you know, the situation that we, we, we have that we have here, you know, and you guys have kind of been mentioning it, the pieces that, that we have or the lack of the pieces that, that, that we presently have with this team, you know, it, it really does go back to the, the draft, you know, and you guys mentioned us drafting a punter in the fourth round, everybody's scratching their head, you know, what are we, you know, we have, we have these needs, um, and we've talked over and over about, listen, we need to draft offensive and defensive linemen. This draft, this past draft was loaded, loaded with offense and defensive linemen. This was the draft that you wanted to, we could, we could have traded back. We could have, you know, we could have gotten the best tackle. We could have gotten the best guards. We couldn't have gotten the best centers. We could have gotten the best interior defensive linemen, um, um, edge rushers. This was that draft that we could have loaded up on the on the guys that are in the trenches, and um, and we did not. You know, we 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 got the the pretty picks. You know, which um, you know at at number one. I, listen, I get it if that's what you want to do. Um, and then we got went and got the receiver. Okay, amazing receiver, great to have him. But if you can't get the ball to him, it's not going to matter. Lance, when you when you look at the fact that through. The first three games of the season, Caleb Williams has been pressured on over half his dropbacks. Mm -hmm. He's been sacked 13 times. And you look at, like you said, the fact that there were so many options out there at offensive line. I'm three mm -hmm. weeks into the season, and I'm saying that Ryan Poles has failed Caleb Williams early on. Are you at that point yet? Well, well, I, I wouldn't, I'm, saying, I'm not saying Ryan Poles. I don't think Ryan Poles is, is – I'm going that far – just now because the problem with the offensive line right now is has been fundamental it's a fundamental issues a technical issue you know so to me it's it comes down to what 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 principles what have we been doing all spring and summer you know all spring and summer you should have been you know your your base rules of coming down communication and what you're supposed who you're supposed to be blocking what games you're going to be seeing you know uh five man games four man games you know six man pressures all of that stuff should have been – they should be sharp right there, you know, and and not seeing them being sharp. There's a difference between, um, you know, Coleman, uh, uh, Tavantra Sweat, you know, putting Coleman into the quarterback's lap. He's where he's supposed to be. It's just it's, – it, there's a talent issue there. Yeah. You know, so if, if Nate Davis is where he's supposed to be, you know, worst-case scenario, that, that defensive tackle is putting him into the, to the quarterback's lap, which is not going to happen. You know, so fundamentally, there's a breakdown in, in, in our technique. So that's not polls. Polls doesn't coach the offensive line. You know, that comes down to what are our, what are our basic fundamentals offensive line and who's, who's instilling those as the coach. Is that a Chris Morgan thing then? Because, Lance, you can tell me if I'm crazy, but watching this team last year, I thought there were moments where the offensive line looked average and there was a lot of fields holding the ball a little too long, running mm -hmm. himself into sacks. Watching it this year, I think they've gotten way worse, which yeah. is astounding to me because it's year three for Braxton Jones. You'd think he'd start getting better. You yeah. went out and addressed the center position, whether you did it the right way or not. Yeah. Nate Davis, 
back in the system, and it feels like even Darnell Wright. What happened? It, this whole it line, it just so feels worse. like it's regressed. Who's it's off. On? It does feel. It feel like it, it's off. Um, and you know the 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 synergy, or you know the you know you you got to gel as a unit. It's not there at all. You know, and and I'll say you know they, they've been playing some away games, and NRG Stadium was loud. You know, which does a disservice to those outside tackles who have their eyes on those uh, those pass rushers, and they're moving when those pass rushers move, which already puts them at a disadvantage. You know, but uh, but they're 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 a unit that is not playing well together, which means they're not gelling, which means they're not comfortable with each other. You know, and so um, yeah, the first thing that you want to think is 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 what are we being what are we being taught? Like, what are the things that that aren't working? With us fundamentally, and that starts with that starts with Morgan, and it, it, it really does. Lance, when I watch the the defense out there, it, it I, I keep saying it, it reminds me of what a lot of you guys, what you went through in your time in Chicago, where you know there were offenses that just didn't do enough, and you had to go back out there. Yesterday versus the Colts, what would have been your message out there when? I mean, listen, you, you could visibly see that they were gassed when they went back out there after the uh, um, false or the encroachment penalty, what would have been the message to you to, to try and keep that energy up, get dig deeper and get some more energy out of them? Cause after that, it looked like Jonathan Taylor was a hot knife through butter. Yeah. Yeah. Well, number one, stop peeking. You know, um, there was some plays where Jonathan Taylor, he gassed our defense and he gassed our defense because there's a guy here and he's peeking where he shouldn't have been peeking. If he stays here where he's supposed to, linebacker hits that gap, there's nowhere for him to run, all right? So that's for, that's number one. We have to handle what we have to handle defensively. What happens on the other side is none of our business, you know? Now, what we are realizing here is now that we've come off this sideline and now we're, we're, we're turning right around, you know, get a quick squash of uh, water, and then we're headed right back out to the, uh, to the field, we have to take the ball away. We have to score, period, all right? We you. you it's not a situation where you can we can rely on uh, the offense. We we do have control of special teams. We have control of defense. So with that being said, now when we take this ball away, let's get ourselves a, 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 a car- caravan party. Let's get into the end zone and let's go win this game ourselves. We did it in week one. We can do it in week three. We sure as hell can do it in week four. Got to see it. Got to see it. Uh, <laughs> the the one conversation we've been having pretty pretty commonly has been uh, the 1.8 yards per carry we've gotten out of DeAndre Swift. Shay, Shay, breathe, Shay, breathe, Shay. I'm going to we'll, rip my hair out of my skull, we'll, man. We'll get I through can't, it. We'll I get, can't do it with this guy. We'll get through this together, I promise. <laughs> Lance, he's getting 1.8 yards a carry through three weeks. He's got 37 carries for 68 yards. This was the the, the big swing, free agency open. They yeah. pulled Pat. My ass didn't hit the couch at the start of free agency. DeAndre Swift was a bear. 1.8 yards a carry? Not it always felt arrogant to me. It's just like that. How is that where you're spending money before the interior on either line? I, I agree. I, I, you know, it, it's kind of shocking to me that, you know, it, it took until really this game to you to really start seeing them uh, uh, use DeAndre in, more, in a more unique way. You know, they split him out a little bit, you know, and yeah. I, I thought that should have been from week one. You yeah. know, I'm in my head, I'm thinking Jameer Gibbs, you know, this kid can do it all. Why aren't we allowing him to do that? You know, use him in unique ways, get him in matchups with the linebackers, you know, and spread him out, get him in space, you know, and then when he's not in space, let him run in between the tackles. You know, let's commit to let's commit to the run, which I was really hoping they would commit to, even though uh, uh, Indianapolis loaded the box. They're saying, I dare you to throw it. Uh, it, it they still haven't proven that they can consistently stop the run so um 1.8 is very disappointing and uh um i think he is he's underutilized as a as a runner passer and what he can do as far as stretching the field so you think the problem with swift is more not his talent level but how shane waldron has used him how how he's been used uh, uh offensively because i will say this i i don't understand running him directly up the middle like he's a power back and then running roshan johnson to the outside right yeah i, I think there was a time where <clears throat> i think there was a time where roshan was he was he was running the ball 
pretty good. He was running the ball, yeah. getting yards and positive yards. So they just continued to feed him, and that just so happened to be an outside play on that okay. on the, during that series. You know, so I, I think that's more of a more of a, 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 a situational situational thing that he happened to be in. I don't think you you know you give the ball to Roshan and he gets some positive yards, and you're like, okay, we're gonna run it outside. So now DeAndre come in. I don't think it's that. I think it's just by that committee, and he was getting the rock. <clears throat> Fourth and goal, speed option. Your reaction? I don't get it. Um, I don't get it. It's a head stretcher. Um, it's probably I don't. <laughs> it's it's that's one of those plays where you know it's it's all right. Well, it 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 sounds like a good idea if we're up and things are going our way, and I'm gonna we're gonna throw this in. We're gonna have some fun with this one, guys. But you know you're not having fun when when you're just trying to stay in this game. You know, offensively, we don't put up points. You know, right now, as of as of these last these first three games, offensively, we're not putting up points. So we have to have plays that we know are going to be effective, and that play was not going to be effective. Not at the not at the NFL. Not at the not at the highest level possible. You know, you're not going to run a doggone option. It's not going to happen. It, it, it literally just feels like they're trying to run college. By the way, Caleb didn't run speed option in college, but it really feels like they're trying to run college plays to try and make Caleb feel comfortable in the pocket, like fourth and one shotgun. Like, what is this, is this a thing we're doing now? Because I can tell you right now with, with this man on the other side, you run fourth and one shotgun. He's sitting there smiling ear to ear. Cause he's like, I know we're going to get you in the backfield. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's no, no doubt. There's no doubt about that. There's no doubt. And, and uh, more than likely I'm probably going to shoot one of these gaps. You what? Uh, you won't have any momentum. And by the time the running back gets the ball, I will be three yards in the backfield taking him down. And, and that's what we keep seeing. Here's here's my question for you, Lance. We're now three games into the season. Where's your confidence level with a Shane Waldron right now? Because the one thing that I rarely see is, it, as somebody who's watched this story of the Bears three times now, Nagy, Getze, Waldron, yeah. the one thing I rarely see is all of a sudden it just magically clicks and they figure it out. I watched Sean McVay at the beginning. Guess what? He looked like Sean McVay. We watched Clint Kubiak. He looks like Clint Kubiak. Looks like he's got that Kubiak bloodline going. When LaFleur got there, I was like, this guy really seems like he can call plays, but maybe it's just Aaron Rodgers. He still can call plays. Where's your confidence level right now that Shane Waldron can figure it out and get it turned around? Well, you know, the the one of the one of the issues that that I have with uh with Shane Waldron right now is that um and I think one of the issues that he has is is he I think he feels like I can't run what I'd like to run because we're not we're not we're not if we're unable to protect we're unable to communicate we're unable to do anything up front so it's going to continue it's going to limit and once that happens in the first let's say in your scripted plays in that in the first part of the game you're like holy holy crap like what am I going to do now this yeah. stuff's not working um, there's only a small section uh, down in his little card that says okay. When this 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 happens and you're hitting the panic button, these are the plays that these are the only plays that we can we can run. You know, it limits what we can do. So, um, I, I I also I mean obviously I think I think from Getsy to Waldron, it's it's very similar in what I'm seeing on the field as far as play calls. But even with that said, is you're still limited in what you can do when you don't have any when you're ineffective up front. Does it feel like they get punched in the mouth early and just abandon the run entirely? Like well, they, it, they get... it looks like they get punched in the mouth early and then they get punched in the mouth more and then they get punched in the mouth <laughs> again and again and get till, <laughs> until their head's bouncing off the, off the concrete. Well, I'm just, but you know, I'm just talking from a play calling perspective. They get rocked trying to run the ball early. And then that's how you end up with 57 dropbacks against the worst rushing defense in the league is you feel like you can't do anything. We can't run on these guys. We just got to sling it. Yeah, I mean, you know, like I said, they 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 loaded the box. They did load the box, and and it's a situation where where it's it's easy for the Colts to come in and say, "All right, listen, everyone's going to try to run the ball on us," but this team right here in particular, the Bears haven't shown that they can pass. Okay, they they're ineffective on both run and pass. So let's stop the run. Let's load the box up, stop the run, force them to pass because we don't think that they can do it. Yeah. You know, and that's what's going to happen in a situation for us, as opposed to if they played the Falcons or the Texans. You know, they're going to have they're going to get chunked up because they have to 
get into a seven man front. They have to be able to protect against the pass. And as soon as they do, because they be, if they load that box up, the Texans are going to make them burn. They're going to burn them with their, with with Nico Collins and Tank Dale. All right, we don't have that element of the pass to combat if they once they load the box and they say, all right, we're going to stop your run. You know, what I mean, and any team that comes in, you put you put eight men, nine in the box, you're going to stop the run. You're going to have you're going to be effective. Well, most are, you know, but uh, and and when that happens, you got to have something off of that. We don't have that. We don't have two elements. We don't have two sides to our game. So it it, it handicaps us. So in, in that situation, though, right, are we maybe looking at this too aggressively on Shane Waldron? Not the fourth and one speed option. That was stupid. But yep. like, our, it sounds like what you're saying is Shane Waldron called plays to combat what the Colts were doing, yep. which would be the pass there, which in theory, 363 yards, two touchdowns. If Caleb doesn't throw – Two interceptions, one of which, in my mind, Correct. is on Roman Dunze for bouncing off his face. Shane Waldron called a good game in your mind. Though. I mean, it's it's what you're supposed to do. You know, you, you take what the defense is giving you. If they're loading the box, then you are going to throw the ball, play action, throw the ball more. You should be more effective. But shoot, we played we played the Tampa Bay Bucks in 08, and um, they had the number one rushing team in the in the NFL. And our and our coaches basically said, "Hey, listen, we stop the run, we win." Okay. Uh, well, well, uh, greasy, greasy threw for, for almost 600 yards on us. All right. They didn't run. We stopped the run. We shut them down and run greasy threw for almost 600 yards and they beat us. All right. So it's, you know, it's again, offensively, what they did was they took what we were giving. Okay. And if we were, if we were, if we, if we were sharper in our past defense, we would have beat Tampa Bay in Chicago in 08. So then where's your – I guess where's your your beef right now with Shane Waldron? Because I – in my mind, hearing you say that, and I'll take your word for it because you played, you you know a heck of a lot more about football than me. I want an OC that calls the game the right way. I want an offensive coordinator that says, I got nine dudes up here. We throw him back there. I want that yeah. guy. So where's the issue with Shane Waldron for you in this game? Uh, Well – Again, you know, you have a you you sign a uh, DeAndre Swift, and um, in week three, I finally see him, you know, um, break the huddle and as a receiver, you know, you have you have all these weapons. It's one thing that we talked about: all these weapons, all these yeah, weapons, yeah. you know. And you know, yes, even with Keenan Allen gone, you still have a bunch of weapons there. So I'm I'm just not seeing the uniqueness or the creativity in how we want to get these guys the ball. You know, yeah. uh, uh, just having DeAndre Swift, he's a hell of a catcher. And when you see him, when he gets the ball in space, he moves. You know what I mean? He can move. So um, I, I, I see him moving from the, the, the focal point. And, and I know we're struggling on the offensive line. We're struggling on the offensive line. But you've got to be creative. To me, you've got to be creatively creative, creative in getting some of these guys the ball, stretch them out in the field. This game against the, the Colts, this should be a game where – um, we, we're able to flex a little bit of our offensive muscle. We have to show some sort of production, and we're not getting it. We're not getting it against uh, a, a team that we lost, again, to a team we should have beat. Uh, Caleb Williams, 363 yards. I, erase 40 of them on the Hail Mary if you want to. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not erasing them because if DJ Moore makes one yard more, it's three touchdowns and, and – Two, sure. 363 yards. I'm not erasing the 40 yards. I'm just making the point. If you want to get rid of him, yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. He still goes over 300. It's the 52 dropbacks. It felt like he started to progress through his reads and see the field a little bit better. Lance, were you with me on that? What did you think of his development? It was all right. You know, uh, he still missed some throws. He still missed some throws. Um, and there's some communication issues with him and the receivers. You know, receiver yeah. banking right. He's throwing left, and what is it know, with I, that? It, it, like three DJ week, more, three all weeks the time. in. DJ Rome last week, three weeks in. You still got miscommunications. That's yeah. that's scary. The back shoulder. It, you know, there's there's things there that uh, that really need to be cleaned up, and and you don't require that. Does not require an offensive line to be on the same page to be in sync with that. Um, so that was that was a little discouraging for me to see. Uh, but yeah, I mean, shoot, you, you drop back as much as you have, as much as we drop back, they load that box, you get 300 and, uh, 360, whatever yards. Um, that is a positive, you know, you got to find the positives in, in each week. And even in these losses 
and you got to draw from something and you got to you got to build on something you can say hey listen guys we were able to, to move the ball through the air you know we is, haven't is that done the, that. Is that is that the football equivalent of like a kobe bryant stat line <laughs> 363 but 52 yards <laughs> like that's, that's like going 33 for yeah, 45 his but... <laughs> final game he scored 60 <laughs> yeah. on 68, on 68 shots, shots. <laughs> um just quick like when you see that who is that typically and i'm talking about like early in the game i think it was a second down uh caleb's looking for dj Moore on the outside and caleb's throwing what looks like a comeback route dj Moore's running a nine just flying down the sideline Right. Who is that usually on? Looks like DJ it's runs the wrong be, route, but it might be the quarterback called the wrong play. It typically would be the receiver because the quarterback knows what everybody's doing on every play. Um, mm. Now, we saw that happen on three different occasions. Yeah. You know, so. In this game alone. In this <laughs> game, it happened on three separate occasions. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of a head scratcher. It's like, man. So on these three plays with the same quarterback, different receivers, they ran the wrong routes, you know? And it, so now it's, it, it starts to bring back, you know, well, initially it should be that the receiver needs to know what he's running. But on these three separate routes, these receivers somehow, all of them screwed up on their routes and he threw it the wrong way or he threw it to a spot because it, it, it looked like he's throwing it, throwing it to a spot, which is what your quarterback's supposed to do. Right. But you got to know where the spot's supposed to be. Right. Yeah. So, you know, uh, we don't we don't know. And they're, they're not going to tell us. But, you know, typically if it's happening uh, numerous times or or as a coach, if I'm trying to coach something, if I'm trying to coach a technique. First guy screws up I'm like, what are you doing? Next guy come in. I told you to do it like this. Next guy comes in. He screws it up. Come on, man. What are you guys doing? All right. Just, it's a simple thing. Third guy comes in. He screws it up. And then you stop. You say, you know what? I'm gonna redo this. I'm, we're all gonna redo this because three guys screwed it up at the same. Uh, three guys screwed up the same drill that I've been teaching. I'm teaching it wrong, so yeah. we're gonna take. It's my fault. I'm gonna reteach it because you guys don't understand. You gotta have that maybe it's me moment when you're like, yeah, when you, yeah, when you know you what I mean, right? Well, you keep losing different girls, and you're like, nah, it's all them, man. I, they, <laughs> these chicks, man, they just crazy out here. I just can't yeah. find a good. It's no good women left. It's like ah, maybe it's you, bro. <laughs> every relationship I have. <laughs> Goes up in flames two weeks in. <laughs> These women are horrible. <laughs> Man, not really. Wait a minute. I'm being kind of a bleep hole all the time. You know what I mean, though? Yeah, so I need to look at my comments. Of like, everybody should be allowed to get punched in the face once a year. Because if somebody uses, like, their punch in the face on you, you got to recognize. That might be me. <laughs> yeah, so I've always said to people, like, if you're walking around and you meet an asshole, you met an asshole. If you're walking around and everybody you meet is an asshole, you're the you're asshole. The asshole. 100%. <laughs> so, it, like, it sounds to me like we should just, again, lay the blame at Shane Waldron. Maybe the verbiage <laughs> is too difficult. The receivers can't figure out the routes. Yeah. I'm just, I listen, I'm just, we're all just putting two and two together. That's all. You know, we don't know. We don't know for sure, but it sure sounds like. We know where the issue is on that one. Yeah, I, I mean, listen, it, it, and that's what scares me because this isn't different, Lance. Me and you talked about it, right? We had had, uh, you know, a couple of Chicago Bears beat reporters come on the Chicago Bears podcast, and we're like, they're basically like, nah, this guy, you know, he doesn't always use the right personnel, doesn't always run the football well, gonna have the ball in the air, doesn't do smart plays on fourth and one, third and one, short options. That's why he wasn't interviewed as a head coach here. And most of us just went, ah, that's probably okay. Three weeks in, it looks a lot like what we heard we got from Shane Waldron coming in. And that's where my concern is. But with that being said, it does seem like Caleb Williams is still developing. And, and three weeks in, I mean, how much can you take? I, I guess this is the question, Lance. How much can you take from a defense coming in that we all said, there's no way the Bears shouldn't be able to beat this defense. You can pick how you want to beat them. They're not that good. And they just lost two of their best pieces. Well, how much can you take away from Caleb having a big day versus that defense? That feels a little bit like Mitch versus Tampa. And that's the game everybody holds on to when he had what 400 plus yards. It was like, well, yeah, they're running man and he's throwing the football. Over. They're the guys running wide open. Yeah, it was bad. Um, that was a really bad Tampa team. Um, well, here's the here's the thing that that uh really kind of concerns me with this situation. You know, and especially if it doesn't get any better, we don't see more progress. You know, we're 
how many how many co uh, office coordinators have come into Chicago and have been successful? It's 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 a bad it's a very bad track record. It's a yeah. very very bad track record. So let's say things with Waldron doesn't work out. You know, how are we going to find another OC? The ones that we really want. Okay? Yeah. The only way you're going to get an OC that you really want, you have to fire Aberflus, and then you're going to have to go get the head coach that the OC will come with. Or the OC okay? is the head coach. Or yeah. the OC, yeah. He's the head coach, you know, and then he brings what, what he needs. You know, now it's – You guys still what, using Ben Johnson over there? What happens with – right. You know what I mean? What happens with uh, the, 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 the defense in the D.C.? You know, yeah. you're going to – there's going to be some sort of drop off here, you know, and so I, uh, I know like you guys and like myself, I'm rooting for Waldron. I'm rooting for this offense yeah. to find their way, um, and it's it's just it's it's disheartening because we've gone through so many OCs that haven't found the success, haven't found the right key here, you know, and to me, it's it's you have to stop trying to force something, you know. Rather than listen, this is what's presented to you. You know, get out of your comfort zone a little bit and, and take what the defense is giving you. Well, that's what Shane Waldron did against the Colts. He took what the defense was giving him because they were loading that box and we yeah. threw for over 300 yards. And next week, it may be the chant, maybe it's something different, but please utilize that we have. We do have weapons on this team. So utilize these weapons creatively. Let's start moving the ball. Let's start getting those, getting the ball out quickly. You know, and, and, and people talk about when. Caleb's throwing fast. Well, it's three step drop. It's supposed to come out fast. Okay. Yeah. And, and when it's when it's a five step, when they're running deeper, he's holding on the ball a little bit longer. That's what it is. Okay. So you know, it's 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 all about it's all about uh, uh, production. I want to see us produce. And so please, uh, I'm I'm rooting for Waldron because before you know it, we're going to be asking asking for his head, which people are already doing, and they're going to, and then it's 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 going to open a whole other door and wave of what happens next with the Bears. I'm not there yet either, yeah. just on the Waldron thing, because I agree with with you, Lance, that like if this doesn't work with Waldron, then you're bombing out the entire coaching staff. And I right. that, that can't be right. the way we do this again. <laughs> I'm not there with Waldron. That's I'm willing the to I'm willing to give him more time. Yes. The red zone stuff is what really bothers me. Mm -hmm. The personnel groupings don't make sense. DeAndre Carter blocking a guy who weighs 150 pounds more than he does on a running play makes no sense. Wildcat on first and goal. Why are you taking your quarterback out of the play on first and goal? Run him with Khalil Herbert on second down, third down again, the Carter thing, and then speed option on fourth down. The red zone sequencing makes no sense. No. Everything else can be great. You can be a wonder kid OC between the 20s. What matters is what you do in the red zone. That just they, has to get better. And they, you know, and I, I, you know, people talk about, you know, committing to the run, you know, and I said, I've said this before that there's there's nothing in Shane Waldron's uh, uh, um, run game that I've seen up to this point that says that we are we can run we can power run against a team like there's no like committing to the run for Shane Waldron is very similar to Luke Gessie. he's gonna they're gonna throw it to the outside on the receivers get him in yeah. space we're gonna run we're gonna uh, uh, run outside zone here outside zone there now what. What um, Getsy had was he had a Justin Fields, and he could do quarterback called runs. Uh, Fields would take a – he'll scramble, you know, he'll scramble on a pass and he'll run for 30 yards. Well, we don't have that. We don't have that element anymore, you know, and so we don't have a power run game. Like, we don't – we're not a team that runs well in between the tackles, you know, and so it really limits what we can do. So when we get into that that end zone and we're, we're – just it's, it's up on a goal line – you're running gimmick plays. You have the wildcat. You know what I mean? You're running the option because you can't line up, just line up and run in between the tackles. But we don't have that commitment. Lance, how much does the back that you have back there affect that, though? Because I thought it was, you know, a Christmas miracle uh, in the morning when all of a sudden Roshan Johnson was back there and he was able to plow forward for three, four yards per carry, end up averaging 3.8 yards per carry, just going up the middle, power running. What's the, give, me that, give me that question again. How much does the back that you have back there affect that, right? Because 
we saw all of a sudden, right, Roshan was able to move forward running yeah. some power stuff. He was able to get up the middle. And I was just like, look at that. It's a miracle. We can do yeah. this. Like, you just have to have that running back in there. How much does that affect what the offensive line is doing? Uh, I mean, yes and no. I mean, we're, we're playing against the Colts. You know, the Colts have been known to not be able to stop the ball, stop the uh, run game. They struggle against the run game. Um, and even with the box loaded, you know, um, I, I mean, it was nice to see Roshan. He ran hard this week. And he runs hard every week. It doesn't mean he's going to be successful. You know, it doesn't mean that we're going to – he's going to – he's going to find those yards each week. You know, and they're going to be next week, you know, uh, uh, who, who do we have, the, the Panthers or, or – uh, Rams. Next week is the Rams, who – The Rams. Who I yep. thought was going to be a lot Rams. easier, but uh, I don't know anymore. <laughs> right, right. But, we, you know, we play the Rams next week, and and um, and you don't – like, Roshan can get the rock – he can get the rock ten times, and – be an average, you know, two yards per carry. We don't know how it's going to shake out. We don't, you know, what we do know is that we have three capable backs. We do have that, you know, and on any given Sunday, one of those backs can get, it can shake loose on whatever it is that they do and whatever the ball play calling is, we have guys that can run the ball. So I think that's more positive. And I, I do like seeing Roshan get the ball, but um, I, I just want to see us have positive yards. I want to see a commitment to a power run game. Yeah, I want to see a commitment to to a running back. Yeah, like I, I'm so tired of this running back by committee thing because I think it screws you over because none of these guys get comfortable. We've watched this for two years now. But if Swift's just not good, you almost have to because you paid him $8 million to be your lead back. And if he's not capable of doing it, you kind of have to run by committee. I, I would just say you're not good enough to do it the same way that you just said that with Nate Davis. Like that, that would be me. I mean, you've made this call. Multiple times you had to make this call with with Nate Davis, who's making 10 million. You had to make this call with Chase Claypool, who you spent a second round pick on. Sometimes you got to say this guy's not good enough now. Like Lance said, I'd rather give me Swift the receiver more than Swift the running back. And that's the only place he was impactful yesterday. He was impactful that he definitely was impactful that way. Look, you know, Matt Forte didn't have a hundred yard game every game, you know, but we committed to giving him the ball. OK, right. we committed to getting the ball. And there were days where he didn't, you know, he was he was at maybe 30 yards that game. And then into that fourth quarter, boom, he breaks one. All right. He breaks one here, breaks one there. But you have to commit to him. You got to yeah. commit to him. If that's what you're saying, listen, let's get this guy. Come on. This guy's going to work for us. We got to work for him. We have to commit to him. And listen, he's getting three yards here. He's getting four yards here. He got two yards here, got hit behind the line of scrimmage here. Oh, we popped the eight-yarder. Oh, we popped the 18-yarder. You know what I mean? You have to commit to him. You know, if you're going to say, okay, boom, we, we want to see if we can do but you can't back away if you give him the ball three times and he doesn't get a whole lot. You know, that's not committing to that to that running back. Yeah. How many carries is is committing in your mind for, for one back? Because they you're going to get some to the backup, right? I think Roshan ended up with eight. Uh, um I want to say Swift had 14 Thir- in that game, 13. 13. Think. How much Harry's is committed? Committed. I think Right around four, 15, 15, right around 15 is decent. It's, it's pretty decent. Okay. It's decent for, for nowadays, for nowadays to see what you see, what you're going to get, what yeah. you're going to get out of somebody. You know what I mean? Obviously you want to get that, get that number up. You want to get it over closer to 20, but uh, you're, if you're in the twenties, if you're in the low twenties, there's a real commitment to the run. Now, uh, uh, given the circumstances, and um, the, the Colts loading the box um, li- leads to the Bears throwing the ball. And that's, you know, I'm, I, I'm actually a little upset that I, I didn't mention that possibility prior to the game, going up, leading up to the game. You know, this, this team, they don't stop the run very well. Bears don't throw the ball very well. They're going to load the box, make the Bears throw. Yeah, no, 100%. Uh, before we get out of here, Lance, what do you got to see – change from this week to next week i mean (laughs) we lost to a team that i think everybody including probably most of colts media had us beating and now we go up against a rams team who is coming off of a heck of a comeback versus the oh we lost lance and and maybe lance back oh lance is back and i'm back that was crazy. That was like yes, magic. Was. Uh, we, we lost to a Rams team, or we, we, we go up against a Rams team who just came back for, on a heck of a comeback uh, to the 49ers, a team that we thought was decimated, and, and they're like, mm-hmm. nope, we're not out of this. We're still fighting. What do you need to see change for the Bears from this week to next week for us to find a way to win? 
they've got good. I mean, listen, they've got good coaching. You know, the Rams have good coaching, and they, they may be in a rebuild, but uh, but you're gonna get all you're gonna get a whole lot of fight out of them. And any team that that can uh, compete with the 49ers is a team that we're gonna have to look out for. Uh, you know what? You know what I want. I want uh, the, these Bears to take it one one game, one play at a time. Let's get one play at a time. Um, let's get a one drive. You know that we go down and and we're able to run the ball. We're able to play action off of it. We're we're run the right routes. We throw the ball to the right spots. You know we're able to drive down and we get something out of it. You know whether it's three points, whether it's six, and we get that extra point, get seven. But one, let's start with that first play. And let's make sure that, that we win on first down and then take it one play at a time. That's what I want to see um, because we got to have something positive to to pull. We've got to have more positives to pull from our offense. Um, and there's been such a focal point on our offense, we don't even talk about the defense. You know what I mean? <laughs> we don't even talk about the defense, man. It's crazy. They, they, they feel – I know this is lofty. They feel Super Bowl caliber to me. They feel like if you had a mediocre offense – they could carry you to an mm. NFC title game. That's how good this defense feels. To me. Mm. Well, we got to oh. get better at picking offensive players and picking our offense. <laughs> I don't know what it is. If it's some in the water, if it's what, if it's a curse, if it's like <laughs> a hex, that's a voodoo, whatever. Uh, who did? Who did we? Did did George Alice piss somebody off back in the day? And they I'm were like. You. Or did, was there was there a deal where it was like you'll get one, but you'll never get one again for the next <laughs> years? <laughs> right. I'm telling you, and and it feels like they just like like they come down from from above and they're just like this is the offensive playbook that you will run. You know what? Maybe the they, seconds you get here, they're just paying the karmic price to the universe for selecting a punter in the fourth round. <laughs> it's just the karmic justice has come yeah. back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> serves you right. You get a punter in the fourth round. <laughs> <laughs> everything, everything, the, the football gods were all in their favor, and then they, like, turn their back, and Ryan Poles takes a punt, and they're like, what the? They're like, this, yeah. oh, we got to curse them. They're, curse they're, them. <laughs> they're watching it, and they're like, this is going really well. The Bears are building something. Tory Taylor with the fourth-round pick, they're like, oh, <laughs> right. see ya. All right, I'm <laughs> to the Wolves, bro. They're done. <laughs> Lance, appreciate you hopping on. Shay, appreciate you coming through the Always. show as well. Make sure that you guys hit that like button, and we appreciate you watching hit that like button subscribe to the page lead a five-star view y'all know what to do for lance briggs and shay norling it's your boy pat the designer back at it again y'all stay safe out there chicago bread down one love we'll be back tomorrow with courtney cronin peace